Hi, this is Arun Patwardhan. Welcome to today's topic on creating reusable UI components. We are going to learn how to create an UI component in one project and share them so that they can easily be reused in other projects. The checklist here mentions the code and software versions that I have used to create the projects. There is nothing in the code that prevents it from being used for a lower version of the software other than minor syntax changes that would be needed for that particular version of the software. In an earlier article, I had walked through the steps for creating reusable code. This is code that is packaged to allow other developers to use what you have written without a lot of effort. If you haven't read this article, then here is the link to it. This has several advantages. Firstly, it speeds up the development process. Developers can spend more time on writing code specific to their app rather than rewriting a lot of code previously written. There is more consistency between projects. We can write reusable code with the best practices in the industry and this automatically is enforced across all apps and this ensures consistency across all our applications. Reusable UI takes the same concept of reusable code to make reusable UI components. This leads to more consistent UI design across apps and also reduces complexity of UI design. A complex UI that is frequently used can now be designed once and easily reused in multiple applications across. There are a couple of things we need to keep in mind. First, Reusable code cannot be created for more than one platform easily. This blog makes use of UIKit, which is used for UI design in iOS. Additional work will be needed to make the code to work across multiple platforms. Secondly, the reusable components we create do not render in the actual project storyboard. What other developers will see is a blank canvas. While we can see the UI itself in the framework project, we cannot see it in the actual storyboard of the final app. I will explain what I mean by this when we look at some code. Let us have a look at how we can design re reusable UI frameworks. I have a ready project for my reusable UI component and I will walk you through the different parts of that project. How did I create this? Well, it was nothing new. You just click on File, New, project under iOS select Coco Touch framework next give the project your name so I could say reusable UI give the name of your organization bundle identifier languages Swift I'm choosing not to include unit tests click next create the project where you wish and you're done I'm not going to create this project because I'll be showing you the pre-created one instead. When you create a project, you should see the project file with the project navigator up here. There will be a header file automatically generated for you. And I have three folders which I've created for model, view, and images. The image just contains a single image file that I need as a temporary placeholder. The model contains the data associated with the view. And the view is the actual view that I want to reuse. So let's have a look at the different files one by one. Let's look at the model files first. I'll click on gender.swift. Let me hide the sidebar here. My gender type is basically an enum for the gender, male, female not specified. And there is an extension for it which gives me a string version of the enum value. So it is used to convert the enum value to a string. The person details model is a struct which represents the data that I wish to show on my UI component. There are a couple of variables in here representing the data that I want to show, such as the name of the person, person icon, date of birth, address, 
phone, email, company, so on. Basically, what I'm trying to do is create a reusable identity card, which I could use in different applications. So I need to show different details for a person uh, within the identity card. Other than that, there are three computer variables, person height, weight, and gender, which are optional. They also have the will set property observer implemented for them. Basically, what I would like to do is have a more dynamic layout in the sense only show the field, the UI field for person height, if there is a value for person height. Show it for person weight, if there is a value for person weight, and similarly for gender. So what I am doing is keeping track of the number of fields I want to show. The value is seven, indicating the seven different variables that will always be shown. And I increase and decrease the count of entry count, depending on whether person height has a value or doesn't have a value, person weight has a value or doesn't have a value, and the same thing with person gender. So that way, if all three are being shown, then the entry count would be 10. If none of the three are being shown, the entry count would be 7. And if the one or two of them being shown, it would be 8 or 9, thereby telling me how many fields I should generate in my UI. There is a computed property that returns the number of rows. Uh, which corresponds to the number of entries that are there. And finally, I have uh, an initializer which initializes the struct with the different values that I need. So it just loads the value into different fields, it check, uh, checks if the gender is not null, sets the count to one. If the value of the, if the if there's a gender value being passed in, increase the count by one if there's a weight value being passed in increase the count by one and so on and then assign the values of course i have also confirmed to the custom string convertible protocol which allows me to directly print the model using a print statement notice i have given the access specifiers public for all excepting the entry count which i've kept internal as it will not need to be accessed outside the module by any other module. Let us look at the XIB file for my reusable UI. It's a simple view. Let me bring in the hierarchy in here. It's a simple view. I have created it with the help of a stack view. So the stack view contains the icon for the person, the name of the person, along with the table itself. The table contains a couple of rows. In this case, there are some placeholder values provided, but this is where the name, the age, the address, date of birth will all appear in my view. The check mark image file that I placed was just as a placeholder to indicate that I have an image here. I have also applied constraints onto the different elements so that they will automatically resize depending on the view that is there. I have not put many fancy state constraints, just some basic ones to get reusable behavior. Let's look at the Swift file for the corresponding view. Uh, just one point, the reusable components basically sitting inside a UI view. My UI, the identity card is basically a class that inherits from UI view and conforms to the UI table view delegate and data source protocols. I have IB outlets for the three elements, basically the icon, the name, and the table view. Other than that, I have local variables. One that holds the reference to the model. There is a variable for nib name to hold the name of the nib, uh, XIB file. There is a reference to the UI view. 
and there is a cell identifier variable. These three are internal by default and not accessed outside. Let us look at the different functions that we have in place here. First one and the one of importance is the setup function. The first thing that we really have to do is to load the nib file using the nib name that we have provided above in the variable earlier. So what, what we're doing here is we're creating a UI nib object that contains all the elements that we have within the nib file. And this is the object that loads the graph, the object graph in memory, but it does not do the archiving, which is something that we will have to do to get them loaded completely. Get the UI view from the object here. Okay, so we instantiate it with the owner self and get the UI view, which is the main top level view for our reusable component. We set the bounds for a view and then we finally add this view to our own sub view. The two functions that follow are basically the delegate methods for UI table view. The one is for number of rows and sections. The other is for cell for row at index path. The number of rows and sections gives me the number of rows that I need to show for a given section. And the cell for row at index path checks to see if there's a reusable cell with matching identifier and then creates one if it doesn't exist and goes ahead and then populates the different rows depending on you know whether there is data in that particular cell. Populates the cell and returns the cell back. Other than that, I have the basic initializer methods out here, the init with frame and the init required init method for the coder, both of which call the setup method, which we've declared up here. And then there is the we are overriding the layout subviews method. There is also an extension for UIV identity card that basically loads the data onto the view. Basically, what happens is any data that we get, we load it into our model and then ask the table to reload itself so that the data appears in the table. So now let's look at a project that takes use of this UI. I have already built a framework of that earlier project. And in this project, I have embedded it in the binary section. So I already have my re reusable UI component framework added to this project up and ready to go. So let's have a look at a few files. I'll start off with my storyboard. What I've done here is I dragged a simple UI component, UI view component onto my canvas and in the attributes inspector, sorry, the identity inspector for that view, I changed its class to UIV identity card and the module to UIV identity card. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I'd mentioned that the UI won't res render on the actual app project. This is what I meant. We don't see the icon or the title or the table in our storyboard view. That's how it is. So you would have to provide some additional documentation with screenshots to your users so that they can actually see how the UI looks. In my view controller.swift, I have imported my framework, the UIV identity card framework, and I have an IB outlet reference to my identity card view, which is there on my storyboard. Other than that, I have gone ahead and created a person details model object using the initializer, providing different names to or different values to the different fields that are there. Notice that I'm not providing weight. I'm providing height details as well as gender details. And then finally, I call my load method on the view. This prepare ID card method itself is called in view.load. So let us run the project and see how it looks.
there you go that's my reusable view component there as you can see uh, all my information has rendered up properly on the table so as my title as far as the image is concerned I have basically just one black square for an image out there I mean, and again uh, this is just a basic uh, implementation you could easily work on it tweak it to make it look uh, a lot better depending on the UI that you're located in I haven't done applied any constraints to the view out here as you can see so which is why it's appearing a little bit in the corners but otherwise I can provide more control and have a much better looking UI depending on what I need. So that's how you could easily create UI components that are reusable. I can just take the same component, add it to other projects to get the same sort of a view that I wish. And that is for how you can go ahead and create reusable UI components. At the end of the article there are going to be GitHub links for actually downloading this project so you can download them and have a look at the code yourself and feel free to play around with the code. Thank you.